This is Vincent Lau. He's a professional sharpener for Karin Knives in New York City. He also teaches sharpening classes. The traditional method of sharpening in Japan, we use whetstones or water stones. Just like the name implies, you use these with water. When you have a double-sided stone, you want to soak just the, the coarser side. So if you can get a shallow pan or container with water just to soak half of your stone, that would be ideal. What I like to do is kind of like pinch the neck of the knife or the, the bolster area. So I'll just show you right here. And then you want to have kind of three fingers around the handle for a nice firm grip, okay? I always like to start on my left side of the knife, okay? So holding the knife, my left side facing down is what I like to work on. Vincent recommended the KW65 stone from King. There are two sides to this stone, a 1,000 grit side and a 6,000 grit side. The lower the number, the coarser or rougher the stone. So in that case, the 1,000 is going to be what is coarser. That's going to create an edge on your knife. And then the 6,000 would be to uh, polish and refine. You will also need a shallow pan for soaking your whetstone, a towel to keep your workspace clean and to provide grip, and some paper to test how sharp your knife really gets. We linked our recommendations for all your knife sharpening needs in the description below. Next is um, understanding kind of where to hold the knife in terms of in relation to the stone. I like to hold the knife at a four o'clock or five o'clock position in relation to the stone. Now comes the hardest part. You have to figure out the angle in terms of the edge. So every single knife has a slightly different angle and realistically, the only way to get it properly is to learn how to feel for it. So what I like to do is I like to lay the knife flat on the stone and I like to take two fingers and I place it actually right on the edge of the knife. So my, my fingers are literally half on the knife, half on the stone. While leaving your finger right there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift the spine of the knife and in slowly increase the angle until you feel the edge flat or flush with the stone. Generally, I would say for a Japanese knife, the, this, the angle is gonna be at 12, 10 to 12 degrees. With German knives or your uh, Western style knives, the angle tends to be a little bit steeper. But what you wanna do is you wanna feel that edge flush with the stone. If you don't wanna feel anything catch, on that edge. I have three pennies and what I do is I stack those pennies up and place them on the stone and then lay the spine of the knife onto those three pennies and that gives you a, a rough guideline as well. Remember that angle, remember that feel and we have to maintain that. So what we're gonna do is while keeping that same angle, shift over so that the tip of your knife is roughly on the top of the stone. So before we start sharpening, very important, you got to make sure that the stone has a good amount of water on it. And basically as you're doing this whole sharpening process, every now and then just make sure to splash water because you need to, the stone constantly wet. What you want to do is take two fingers and place it right on that tip of your knife. And what you're gonna do is, while maintaining the angle that you just felt for earlier, you're gonna apply pressure with your left hand and you're gonna push down, applying pressure, you're gonna pull the knife towards you. Use the full length of the stone, so go from the top towards almost the bottom. But you need to apply enough pressure that the stone can grind off metal, so firm pressure. When you go back up, uh, you want to release that pressure. You're just letting the knife glide back up. If that's difficult, what you can even do is lift the knife and reset at the top, pull down, go back up and reset. Once you've worked on the tip, now we're going to work our way slowly down the length of the knife. So we start at the tip. What I want you to do is just move your finger maybe a, a centimeter or an inch over so you're working the next section of the knife. Remember the amount of strokes you did on the tip. When you move down the knife and work on the next section, you want to do the same amount of strokes as you did on the tip. Generally, I would say like maybe two to three per section. So essentially, 
you're repeating the process and you're working your way down the length of your knife. If you have a German or American knife, these knives are symmetrically sharpened. So both sides you're working the same amount, both sides you're using the same angle. What's gonna happen as you repeat this motion over and over again, um, is there's gonna be this thing called a burr that starts to form. As you work the side that you're working on, your, your edge is gonna get thinner, right? You're gonna grind off all that metal that I just showed you. And eventually there's gonna be this little ridge that starts to fold over. And when you run your finger along the edge, you'll feel that little ridge catch. And that's what you're looking for, that burr. Because when you have a burr, that's when you know that your knife is sharp. You're gonna have to repeat this motion over and over until you start to feel that burr from the tip to the heel as evenly as possible. You're gonna keep your knife in the dominant side and you're gonna flip. So this time you're gonna start on the bottom of your stone. So go bring the tip to the bottom and this time what you're gonna do is you're gonna push up. So earlier you sharpened the back, the burr formed on this side. Now you're taking that side that the burr is on and you're pushing it against the stone. So that burr that you created earlier is being taken off. At the same time, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to create a new burr on the opposite side. And once you get a burr from the tip to the heel on your second side, that's when you know your knife is fully sharp. So you got a burr on one side, you got a burr on your second side, your knife is sharp. And now we're ready to move on to uh, polishing and refining our edge. And for me, I'm gonna switch to the finishing stone on my end as well. Fine stones can be a little bit more delicate and they can actually crack if you leave it in water for too long. In this case, what you're gonna do is just splash water on it. You got a burr on one side, you got a burr on the other side. Uh, so you've created an edge on your knife already. So when you have an edge on your knife, that edge is a little bit delicate. And a finishing stone, or any stone for that matter, is very, very hard. So what you have to do is make sure you don't press too hard in terms of pressure that you're applying. We do the same process as we did earlier. Start on the back side, tip to heel in sections, but this time you're gonna apply a lot less pressure. For your finishing stone, you can spend maybe like five minutes or so uh, total, both sides. The longer you spend on your finishing stone, the shinier that edge will start to become. So you're gonna start to see the edge get really uh, polished, almost looks like um, it's reflective. If you've done that properly, this is a good place to, to take a piece of paper out and check to see if you sharpen your knife properly. In order to test to make sure that the whole knife is sharp, you have to use the whole knife by starting at the heel, pulling through all the way to that tip. And if your knife is sharp, it's gonna do that very, very uh, smoothly, very easily. There will be very little resistance. If there is a dull spot, you'll feel the knife kind of drag through that. It comes down to patience and, and spending a little bit more time until you get to the point where your knife is sharper again. If you're looking for products to sharpen your own knives, use our links below. It won't cost you any extra and we'll earn some money to help support more videos like this.